Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 33. And before I start, well, with my normal exhibition match casts, get that out of the way. So yeah, normal Zero K exhibition match casts. But next week is probably that this hasn't quite been arranged yet. No one's actually set it up everything. But it is going to be the last week of April. So as probably going to be a tournament. It hasn't been announced yet, there hasn't actually been the tournament announced yet, but normally there's a 2 2 tournament at the end of every second month, and that includes April. So there's probably going to be a 2 2 tournament next week. I kind of wish I could say that there would be, but usually there is. Next week is the last Saturday of April, which means it's probably going to be a 2 2 tournament. So, fair warning, that actually hasn't been set up yet. Usually these things get set up on the Sunday before they happen. So we'll see Anarchy or Lowry or whoever is deciding to organize the tournament this month, they'll probably put a news post on it tomorrow or Monday. That's usually when they do it. I kind of wish they did it today though, so that I could say for sure. But yeah, generally speaking, that's when the tournaments are gonna be. So there's probably gonna be one. Just keep an eye on the forums because that's where it'll be posted. Uh, I don't know how many people watch the Wednesday streams, but there are fewer people watching those in Saturday stream, so I figure I should get that out of the way now. Anyway, that aside, we're going to have first match going to be Fail Thoughts versus Ivan D on Iced Coffee. So this map is... Actually, first off, should point out, the camera is basically fixed. I mentioned this in the last cast, but this is now very much the case. Actually, the last cast, there was still a bit of jitteriness when it got rotated. I managed to fix that too, so yeah, the camera, despite the new engine kind of messing things up, it's basically fixed. Or if it's not perfect, it's so subtly imperfect that I can't tell. Yeah, it seems to be fine. Yeah, you'll notice it does rotate a little bit. Like, it seems to miss things a little bit, but... Yeah, it works well enough. Anyway. So yeah, there might be a couple minor issues. But for the most part, it basically works. It certainly doesn't jitter, that's for sure. It's smooth and responsive. That's the important thing. So, that aside, yeah, this map... I've shown it off before. It's a fairly typical 1v1 map. You have your... Well, mostly plus two everywhere. There's a couple plus 3.5s in the center, but most metal spots are plus two. That's a fairly typical setup. Both main bases start out pretty evenly. There's a nice path along this ramp. Fairly obvious path, and there's also a less obvious path along the back of the base that you often see players use later in the game. And players will usually build up along the center here, and then they'll send in some forces around the back to try to attack the back door. Most players nowadays will set up lotuses or set, or other defend defenses, defenders, lotuses, whatever, sometimes start us later in the game around that north or south side just to protect that back door. And then after that point, it's basically just a matter of taking half and half and then attacking through the choke points. Oftentimes you also see amphib in order to get underneath these watery sections. It's a little bit tricky to do unless you have control over it, but having these hidden units that can pop out, that's handy. Anyway, Let's get started. Ivan D and Failthos are both going for Amphib Plant. So, yeah, that's apparently the plant to use. I didn't really expect that. When I built this map, I expected it to be Cloaky Bot, primarily. I wanted to have it vehicles work decently well, but the ramp turned out to be a little bit too tall for that. It's, like, it's not the shortest ramp, so it's not great for that sort of thing. But it still works okay. It's just that once stuff starts to get built on it, or it gets damaged, then it becomes vehicle impassable, which is the problem. But yeah, the water... Ironically, the water was meant to just block things off the way that Banded Plains does, but it's a little bit high, which allows... Well, it's not just high, it's also not particularly steep cliffs, so Amphibs can get in, and I'm okay with that. It's just a little odd that both players are using Amphibs. I guess they're that powerful. But yeah, at this point, Ivan D trying to set up a small trap outside of Felthos' base. Felthos... They're assuming it doesn't have radar yet, which is absolutely not true. Belthos knows that Ivan D is sending in something. Although, is... Okay, I don't know if Ivan D is trying to work around where they expect a radar to be or what. If they are, it's not quite working out the way that I imagine they would expect. Imagine that they would expect, but if they aren't, then... Eh, well. I just pointed that out for nothing. 
But I imagine they might have been, because that would be... I mean, they're really cool if they actually did do that. They actually did go around the back and... Doesn't matter, though. Fail thought, setting in an archer. Which is exactly what they need to have to counter this. Archer's basically counter ducks, so this duck is... Not gonna be able to get in too far. You can try to run away, and it's gonna fail. That duck is... Oh no, it's gonna succeed! The archer actually managing to push that duck far enough away. It escapes while Ivan D attacks from the more frontal position. A little surprising. Oh yeah, well the archer is already going underwater to try to deal with the duck just in case. And the duck wisely retreating away from the underwater segment and also retreating away from... Like, if us, they have their area defended. But Ivan D managed to use that as a nice distraction. They are able to get their own economy built up. They don't have to worry too much about Failthos attacking. At this point, Failthos is on the defensive. Ivan D has... Well, let's see. They have two conches so far. And there's only one conch for Failthos in their main base as well. Okay, that duck has gone down. But the important thing is that Ivan D managed to get an economic lead very early on. Because they knew that Failthos was going to be on the defensive. That was a very good move. So now Felthos is back on the offense, going for a counterattack, and Ivan D, they have a Lotus, they have a few ducks. The ducks are out of position. Felthos could attack very powerfully along the west side of the map. On the east side, however, Ivan D is attacking, putting some pressure there. Hopefully for them, Felthos will move, but it looks like Felthos is moving in. I meant move over to the right to try to defend. But Felthos, confident they can defend with their commander alone, so they're not moving their units out of position. They are not getting there. They are scouting with the Archer, which is a very useful scout. The Ducks are going to move in, try to get rid of this commander. At the same time, Failthos getting attacked. The Ducks moving straight in, but not doing too much. They aren't managing to actually do any real damage. I don't think Failthos is going to have to worry about this too much. Ivan D doesn't seem to be paying attention to the eastern side of the map here. But over to the west, Failthos has not attacked, and Ivan D, aware that there are units here, Setting up their defenses, and that's going to be harder for Ivan D to get in. I'm a bit surprised Felthos is not attacking. Not totally surprised. That would be very risky. That's a lot of units they could lose. They'd probably kill the commander, or in the past, with the Lotuses not so much. But before when the commander was up front, the Ducks probably could have killed it. And it is moving up front, but now we're seeing a Defender Nest coming up. Ivan D, they are getting paranoid about that. But they still have an economic lead. That's the important thing. They're 23 up, 23 medal to 15. Belthos has not expanded along the west side at all. Despite the fact that they have a bunch of units there to defend, they have not set up a conch. How many conches do they even have? Okay, they have two right now. They just got their second. So at this point, Failthos is behind economically. Ivan D, good conversion from early aggression into expansion. You always kind of need to do that when you're doing early aggression. You need to either destroy your opponent's economy or naked expand behind it so that you are still pretty healthy economically. However, Felthos, I think actually Ivan D, they're, they were going for more of an expansion-oriented strategy to begin with. They had the two conches when they were attacking. So I think that's really what they were doing. They were actually going on the economic, but yet they decided to go aggressive just to hide that they were being economic about things, rather than going full-on aggressive and then trying to make up for it. Felthos is actually being more aggressive and hasn't, or at least building more military units, hasn't really done any damage. They are kind of evening out, though. Ivan D... Pretty much claiming all the territory they can. Felthos hasn't quite claimed all of their territory yet. And it's a slightly better overdrive grid too. Slightly, but it's still something. So at this point, the players are getting more and more even. Felthos is still slightly behind. Ivan D is getting pretty paranoid. They're setting up, well, they're setting up a lot of defenses around, not just in their borders, around their base. They're making sure that they aren't getting attacked and... A missile silo coming... Wow, that is a five-minute missile silo. I guess they're expecting that Failthos is defending just as much as they are, and they'd be wrong. The east side of the map, yeah, Failthos is defending a great deal, but the west side of the map is quite open. Ivan D could attack that directly, and Failthos moving their units out of position, that means Ivan D could attack this with impunity. The only problem, of course, being that Failthos is sending a bunch of units over to the east, probably trying to pull Ivan D away from the western side of the map where they are weak. But Ivan D could attack with their commander right now, and they'd probably be able to do a enough damage to win. However, looks like that distraction is working. The Stinger did not get up. Not that it would have been super useful here, but still it would have been something. Conch about to go down. That Stinger going to go down. The Defender's doing a pretty decent job getting rid of the Ducks, but even then, it's kind of hard to make that work. Regardless, Ivan D didn't really fall for the bait too much. They defended a bit because they were going... It was hitting their main military pass. Their units have been going through the center. 
So that intercepted the ducks in the first place, but three ducks to take that out? Moderately efficient. It's still inside Ivan D's territory. Philthos looks like they're trying to creep forward along the eastern side of the map. And Ivan D just taking this western territory that Philthos has failed to take. For whatever reason, Philthos decided not to take these two plus two metal extractors, and they really should have. At this point, Ivan D is going to maintain that economic advantage they've had all game. And the boys coming in against the scallops. Oh man, the archers are being a pain in the butt for those boys. Being a real problem. Because those boys, they do not move quickly enough for the archers to get... Because the archers is a weird raider riot mix. They don't quite fit either. So they do actually win against slow skirmishers like that. They also win against ducks. So like I said, they kind of work in both... Con they work in both contexts. They're pretty dangerous like that. Anyway, as you see now, Felthos is starting to take this northeast side as well. It's creeped over here. So Ivan D taking the southwest, Felthos taking the northeast. Both players have a pretty good angle to attack directly, but Felthos has gone for this missile silo. Ivan D, on the other hand, they're going for a grizzly. They are going end game. Well, they're both kind of going end game. Really, it's mid game. Top level of the main factories is basically mid game play. End game play is things like striders and silencers and behemoths and other artillery like that. That's end game. This is still mid game, but not something you see in a lot of small maps like this. Or at least mid game single unit play. But Felthos does have the larger army. Ivan D at this point does not really have much to go off of. I mean, they have the missile silo. That's basically what they were trying to use. Trying to get a missile silo. Getting up an inferno in the main base. There we go. Burning out. Well, closing up all the. Power plants, trying to burn out all these caretakers, and they aren't being repaired either. Those are, well, it's another Inferno. That should be it for pretty much everything inside this base. Softening it right up, getting rid of the caretakers. Although it doesn't matter, the Grizzly has been built. That was the important thing. I mean, it matters a little because, well, Felthos does want to build as quickly as possible. It's always good to have more units, but the big unit is done. As well as the eastern side of the map, we're also seeing more Infernos. Tearing apart this Defender Nest. This is where they really want to be, though, right in this one spot. And Ivan D should know this. They do indeed know this. They know that there's a ton of stuff here. They want to take that out, or they should want to take that out at least. That would be the best place to hit. Because at this point, the main base is burnt out, and are they going for it? No, they're going for the main base once again. That's a little bit much. At this point, they aren't really going to deal all that much damage to the main base. Not meaningfully anyway. Not compared to what they could deal to this defender nest and then attack from there. Although, admittedly, that's more of a defensive thing. I like, hit this to avoid being creeped up on. Or nuke the Grizzly. That works too. Are there Aeoses coming up? There are just Infernos. That's all that's being built are Infernos. I wouldn't recommend that against the Grizzly. Not when you have all of your units right there trying to get rid of it. At the same time though, that Grizzly is taking a while to go down. Oh, right! I realized that Inferno actually hit on the factory, so it's actually burning up the units. Not killing them. They're still building up in time, but it's burning them up. So it's damaging them throughout, softening them up so that it's easier for Ivan D to get in. And Felthos, there we go. Now Felthos is losing this northeast section. Ivan D's tearing apart the defender nest. As they should do, but Ivan D, however, is going to lose the commander. Next grizzly shot will... No, not even grizzly shot. Boys take it out. And that grizzly, it's still going pretty strong. It, I don't think it's going to be able to be pulled back for repairs, though. It needs to be pulled back for repairs. It should not move forward, but there's nowhere to really... It has to move back through the center. And Ivan D has not really set up to deal with that, though. Their boy's in a decent position to deal with that, but they don't have a whole lot of units. They've been relying so much on those Infernos, it's been kind of risky. They've just been nuking the entire map. Well, burning the entire map, napalming the entire map, not really nuking it. That's a specific thing. That's the Aos. Yeah, burning up the entire map, trying to tear apart Feldas' economy. Losing a lot of their own, too. I mean, losing the commander was not a small deal, but at the same time... The problem is more so the military aspect, and that was not a battle commander. If this Grizzly can go down, that, however, is going to be a pretty big blow. More shots in the main base. <laughs> wow. Aspis gets up, or Aegis rather, gets up right as the Inferno hits, but it did not hit in a particularly good spot to burn the Aegis. If it shot at the factory directly, it would have been great. But at this point, it's just going to be nothing. Those Infernos are going to keep hitting shields, and that will be it. So these Infernos will no longer be useful at the main base. They would be useful elsewhere, but I don't think that Ivan D knows where they'd be useful. Actually, I can check. Ivan D does not know whether or not they'd be useful. They know about the main base, sort of. 
where they can assume the main base. They haven't even looked in the main base. They don't have any ghost buildings there at all. The Grizzly gone to the water. It is healing up. Because Amphib units, they heal in the water. I mean, getting rid of these Defender Nests isn't a bad idea, but it's worth noting, these things cost 500 metal a pop. Like, that's one and a half boys. That's a lot of units that could be built. Where instead, missiles are being built, and I think Ivan D is going to lose this game as a result. They don't have a huge amount of unit variety. They are they have boys, which will beat the Scallops and the Grizzlies, sort of. But still, it's, it's a good unit set, but they don't have a whole lot of units. They could have easily twice as many boys if they stop building Infernos. These Infernos aren't doing a whole lot of damage anymore. They're hitting a few defenders here and there, and yes, if they want to break a defender line, it's a good way of softening it up first. But the main base, they got shields. And it's also been pretty much completely damaged as it is. Like, it's been as damaged as it likely will be, without a direct assault. So I'm not sure why I have indeed is attacking the way they are. They don't seem to have... They they know where Failthos' units are. They don't really know where Failthos' base is. They haven't built a whole lot to scout it out. I mean, they don't have anything to scout it out with. No air units, no real light units. Amphibs don't really... And they have the ducks. That's, that's a light unit, but that's not going to last too long. So they don't really know exactly where best to hit. However, I think of this, like, they are probably overbuilding the Infernos. I'd say keep one or two in reserve when once a weak point is found. I mean, this area is pretty well softened up. A few boys could take that out. And it looks like a few boys are, in fact, planning... Yep, there's six boys coming in, trying to take this out. But that's the thing, they're planning to take it out. That's about it. That's all they're doing is planning. Well, on Feldos, on the other hand, they're just attacking with ever-growing armies. And this actually, now they know, okay, now this is where I can attack. Though, I'm a bit surprised the radar was not in place. The radar was in place enough, I think. But yeah, like I said, the boys, they can take this out. It's no big deal. The Stinger is a problem. Everything else is kind of safe, but it doesn't matter. Failthos is at the west side of the map. Ivan D's out of position, cannot defend this. Lotuses are helping slightly, but they don't matter all that much. Okay, are th is this Inferno going to attack? No. Okay, that one hit. There, there was one that hit this army. I was about to ask, did that hit the army? And the answer is yes, actually, it did. It did end up hitting the army. That's good. It needs to do that. It needs to get rid of these things. It needs to get rid of the scallops and the boys, but it's kind of hard for it to do so effectively. But at least this northeast area has been taken somewhat for Ivan. It's been removed from Felthas' control completely, but at the same time, so is the southwest from Ivan D. There isn't really a whole lot that's gone in either player's advantage, except that Felthas has the bigger army. And they have more army production. They have a lot more going into their factory, whereas Felthas. Sorry, Ivan D is focusing so much on Infernos. They're, are they even putting 10 metal into their factory? See, this one's... Okay, just barely 10 metal out of 30. There's the other 20 going to the missile silo. Whereas, Failthos, they're pushing 25 metal. They're pushing... No, I mean, sorry. They're pushing their 30 metal. They've got the advantage now. And all that metal is going into units. Failthos is going to win. It'll be one more attack and they'll win. The only hope that Ivan D has is a clutch Inferno destroying all of these ducks, which probably isn't going to happen because they're aiming in the wrong spot, for one thing. 500 metal kind of wasted. Like, like I said, it's 500 metal. It's a very important thing to point out. It's 500 metal. Ivan D does not know where to shoot. They don't even know really where the units are. They see some units on radar. Whether they respond to that, I don't know. They know there's ducks there. I don't know how they know how many ducks Failthos has been producing, though. But at this point, Ivan D is basically just looking down the barrel of a gun, and they have no response. Well, they have the Grizzly. Bit of a desperation play. Honestly, shotguns would be a better idea. They know that there's ducks there. Shotguns or archers? Shotguns and or archers would be a good idea. Probably both. And more Infernos onto areas that don't, unfortunately, matter. Like, I don't know why Ivan D is aiming where they are. I think they're aiming where they expect... There is going to be stuff, but not where there actually is stuff. At this point, Ivan D's lost the economic advantage. They've stopped. No, are they continue? They're continuing to build. In the fact, they're continuing to build the silo. They're continuing to build this grizzly too, but that probably won't finish. I think the game is probably going to be over before that finishes. That's going to be a bit of a problem. So it looks like this is game. Ivan D is one last ditch attempt with these boys. That grizzly that Failthos made, it's still up, it's still running. That's the first grizzly too. That has not changed anything. That grizzly has not died. 
been very efficiently used. The boys are going to try to finish it off, but at this point, is it going to matter? If that grizzly dies, so what? And it's going to die. There it goes. Finally goes down inside of Ivan D's territory. Reclaims about all Ivan D could even take advantage of, and even with that, I means the wind isn't helping too much. It's not good at the moment. There's some solar, but the solar, most of the solar has been under attack or destroyed. And these ducks going down, boys basically surviving based on their massive health pool. But Fail Thoughts, they still have so much available to them. They have another Grizzly. Yet another Grizzly being produced. Ivan D, another minute and a half at least. Minute to two minutes before they're finished this Grizzly up. Where are their workers? They need to reclaim right away. Seriously, where are the workers? There's... Are there no workers? Seriously? Ivan D has no workers on the field. They're about to make some workers, which is exactly what they need to do. It's just that... They have no workers on the field. It kind of sucks. They have an 80% done Grizzly. No easy way to build it quickly. No easy way to get Reclaim in order to push the metal they need to build that quickly. So I have to wait until that's done. And by the time that happens, I Failthos could easily set up the rest of the map. They already have two Grizzlies coming in. A third one being built up, and they can get one every minute at this rate. 60 metal with all the... Well, where's the Reclaim? There's... Well, there's a bunch of metal extractors. There's the Overdrive that's coming in. Yeah, these are all pushing at plus 3, roughly. This is... Oh, wow! The plus 3.5 is up to plus 5.3 just from Overdrive alone. Where's the... Oh, I don't see any pylons. Unfortunately, it's kind of bugged out. But yeah, at this point, Failthos has a massive economic lead. Ivan D has 13 metal income. Just now getting a Grizzly. Just now getting some conches, but they need to build those quickly! Ah! They're moving towards this missile... Extra okay, the missile silo... Might be a last ditch effort. It might work. I don't know. Against the Grizzlies is a little bit tough. I don't think the Infernos will win. But they do have this. They do have two now coming to three Infernos. It's just if they prioritize this conch, that would allow them to very quickly build up because of the reclaim. They'd be able to reclaim. They'd be able to build up more power plants. Mostly be able to reclaim. That's the biggest thing. If they can reclaim, they're good. Like one conch on reclaim and then a bunch of others building power plants. That should be pretty sensible. Now we have Grizzly Wars, which will go into Failthos' favor. Unless Ivan D pulls these boys out of the water. Why is Ivan D not pulling these boys out of the water? Ivan D, you have boys that are idle. No, this Grizzly's dead. Being hit on all sides. Down it goes. Yeah, Ivan D, bit of a waste, unfortunately. Spent five minutes building that Grizzly and unable to even keep it alive for one. Do have the reclaim up now, finally. They do have power up the wind generators, apparently starting to work again. And the Inferno is moving out, trying to get rid of this army. They at least know where to aim this time. They know there's the stuff there. Hitting yet again that area. I guess because it's their plus 3.5. That makes sense. You know, get rid of the plus 3.5 metal. But this army is high priority. It needs to go down right away. I don't even know if a can with a napalm missile. I think that that's the alpha is too low. With the repair going on there with Failthouse's commander. I think the Alpha's too low. I think they would need to actually use an Aos. And the boys in here against the Grizzly. At least the Grizzly can't fire back underwater. But then again, that's underwater. When it's above water, all bets are off. And with that, I think Failthouse is going to be able to just crush this. I have indeed a great... I have indeed had a great economic advantage early on. It's just unfortunately for them, they didn't really convert that... They never really had much of a military. They got that missile silo at first, and yeah, it's good to fire a couple Infernos if you do that. And then stop. Figure out where to hit, and then hit, like have one or two in reserve at most. Like, have one maybe in reserve, and then hit from there. Maybe, but always remember, those are... Okay, now it's Shockley's. Good idea, actually. Stun up the... Well, good idea if there are follow-up forces, which there aren't. But at least the Grizzlies will stop for about a minute. But yeah, bearing in mind, those are 500 metal each. Like, four to 600 metal for that fact. Actually, 800 is the Quake, I think. Yeah, they're pretty expensive. Missiles are not cheap. They're not free, that's for sure. So that's something that must be borne in mind all the time when using a missile silo. Those are not free. Those could be units. And you gotta value it which one is more useful. Because you, you can't just go with missiles all the time. They're kind of handy because they do bypass defenses, but they're also not that individually powerful because they bypass defenses. And because Zero K is a pretty well-designed game. <laughs> Not going to allow that sort of thing to happen. So, that is that game. Next game is going to be between... 
Dogs of Doth and Steel Blue. Same set of games that was being played that I cast the Trojan Hill games last time. Today, however, is going to be in Culta. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.